wow, this is pretty exciting. All right, I just want to tell you, give you a little bit of back, background of, about myself. Um, my family and I, about two years ago, started Freedom Harvest Farms, where we um, grow some of our own vegetables and share that with a community-supported agriculture-type program. We also started the Corpus Christi, I also started the Corpus Christi Downtown Farmers Market in March, and that's been going really well. And about um, a year ago, I started a social networking campaign uh, to help our community know more about the healthy lifestyle choices that they have available to them. Now today what I really wanted to talk to you about is this idea of a revolution that's happening right here in our community. And the basic concept of a revolution is simply that it's one person or a small group of people's great idea that, um, begins to take a, that the society begins to take on and adopt. And um, my kind of way of looking at that is that it's, there's a stone or a catalyst that we toss into the pond that causes a ripple of energy and creates a tidal wave of required change to make some sort of change in our community or in our world. And um, today I want to talk to you about the food revolution. And I want you to keep in mind that I am a pretty average person. I, um, I, I don't have any background in food and nutrition science. I'm not a personal trainer or anything like that. I'm, basically, I'm just a mom who had this idea that um, I really wanted to, to make some healthy choices in my life. And that I wanted to make it easier on people in my community to make healthy choices as well. And I just became really passionate about this idea. Now the stone that start, stones that started uh, to make the ripple of my life um, started very simply as a young mom. These are my kiddos, Lillian and Cortland, and they've made, uh, any mom, they've made a huge difference in my life. And um, what, they, what they did for me was that I began to look at them as little, these little beings and go, okay, my job is to not only nurture them, but to grow their little physical beings, right? And so I'm going to start them out with food. And if I hadn't been a nursing mom, the food that I would have fed my children as I started them out into the world would have been a can of formula, a box of, of uh, cereal, uh, and some jar of smelly baby food stuff that I probably wouldn't have even ate. And one of the scary things to me was is that when I turned these packages over, I saw a list of ingredients of things that were all kinds of mixtures of chemicals and things that I couldn't even pronounce. And not only that, but the first ingredient on the list, the one that we know is the biggest ingredient in this product, is corn syrup. And I, it, that just kind of blew my mind. And so I, I started also um, finding out other things that were happening in our community that really concerned me. Because in 2010, Corpus Christi was named the fattest city in America. Uh, wow. And then, and, then, and then as a public relations coordinator for Driscoll Children's Hospital, I discovered that, um, or I became aware of the fact that we were seeing record number of cases of type 2 diabetes and childhood obesity in the children in our community. And I got really concerned about this, and it really began to hit home with me. And so I took that into my own home, and this is where I believe that the ripple began for us. And we started looking at the food that we were eating in our home, and I realized that what we were eating was just all of these convenience foods, these sugary drinks, and all of this uh, fast foods, and I just got really worried about it. And, I, and, and not only that, but I started doing some research, and I went out there, and I looked around, and I said, what are other people doing? I read books by uh, uh, John Robbins, uh, um, The Food Revolution. John Robbins is the heir of Baskin, Baskins and Robbins. And I read books by Michael Pollan, uh, Food Rules and uh, Omnivore's Dilemma. And um, an, an interesting side note about Michael Pollan is, is that Michael Pollan was just a journalist who got real interested in an industrialized food system and started going out there and talking more and more about it. And so this, uh, this I, I started thinking about this whole organic idea, and I started hearing all these little rumors, and, and, and I started wondering about these chemicals that were in our food, and it just kind of, I was like, what is going on? And so one of the things that I always, that always really hit me um, back then when I started this whole idea was that I discovered that a lot of the, 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 the chemicals that were being put in the food that we were eating, like the meat and the dairy products that we were eating, like hormones, so that the animals will grow faster and produce more because we've got to feed more people with this industrialized system, and then antibiotics being put into these animals so that they will stay well because the living conditions that they're living in are making them sick. And so these things began to carry over into a conversation or a surge um, of conversation with the people out in the community. And um, so we started as a family, not only just looking at what we were eating, but we decided we were going to take a little bit more control over what we were eating. And so we started a garden and we got some chickens and they, we allowed the chickens to, or we allowed the chickens to lay the eggs. <laughs> And so, 
and so we, um, we basically just became more and more aware of what was out there. And I started looking at, okay, there's a farmer's market over here so we can get some meat, we can get some grass-fed beef, and we can get all of these different things. And I started to become aware of what was going on in our community. And then because I had a background in public relations, I became kind of a, a person that knew what was going on and became a voice in our community for this, along with some other people. But I began to get um, asked to participate in all different kinds of, of things, like um, Junior League Corpus Christi does the kids in the kitchen. I did that with them a few times. And uh, the Caller Times came and talked to me. They wanted to come out and see the farm and see what we were doing. And um, I did some blogging and some social networking and stuff like that. And I just became a, a person that kind of could carry this message out into to our community. And, and what I found was is that we began to see this tidal wave of change, uh, this critical mass of change happening. And what I saw, one of the first things I saw, was that the experts were no longer just talking to experts, but they were also talking to, and, and early adopters like myself, but they were also talking to the general public. And one of the first things that kind of hit me upside the head to realize that there was really change starting to happen was this movie, Food, Inc. And people started coming up to me in this community, and they're like, have you seen this movie? And I'm like, wow, there are people out there in the world, like in Corpus Christi, watching a movie about industrialization of food, a documentary about industrialization of food, and it's becoming kind of a household name. And that kind of blew my mind. And so I started like thinking about um, what other things are happening, and I started recognizing that what was happening is, is the consumers were voting with their dollars. And they were making a change because what we were seeing in our grocery stores was the organics were starting to grow on our shelves and more and more things were happening. And we started having people begging us to have not just one farmer's market, but we want another farmer's market. And I jumped on the chance to get involved in that. And so all of these things that we started to see changing in our community, um, we're at that point now where, where we need to, um, to, to begin to ride that wave. And so here I'm at a point now where I want to ask Corpus Christi, I want to challenge Corpus Christi. And what I would ask for you, what I ask of you as a community is to begin to look at your own food choices that you're making. Begin to put food as a priority in your life and in your family's life. Because this, is, this isn't just about your own personal health and day-to-day -day well-being, which by the way, you will begin to feel a whole lot better when you start making better choices in your food. But this is about the future existence of our species. Because we can't continue to evolve intellectually if our bodies are becoming more and more and more sick and more ill along, along the way. And get involved in the local food movement. As consumers, you are, the, you are what drives this capitalistic society and how do we make changes and all of this. So go and, get, go and be a part of the, uh, your, go find a farm like ours, like ours or like Lorbro Farms over in Alice and take your kids out and let them see where milk comes from and cheese comes from, where eggs comes from. Go to your farmer's market. Don't just go because it's cool and it's hip to go every once in a while and say I went to a farmer's market. Go buy your groceries at the farmer's market. Go there first. Go to your produce section of your grocery store and tell them that you're not going to buy uh, certain foods that are um, more laden with ke chemicals like strawberries, that you're not going to buy their strawberries at all until they start carrying organic strawberries during strawberry season. And the last thing that I would ask you to do is to continue this conversation. Help me continue this conversation. Have this conversation with people outside. Go pick up a, a few of those books that I mentioned. Get Food, Inc. Go home tonight, uh, plug it in, and look it up on Netflix and watch it. it these things are gonna, going to start conversations in your home. They're going to start conversations with your friends. And we're at, we're at that point now where um, that is what's going to make the true change in, in, in our society, is this uh, voting with our money and making, this, um, making these changes, right? So basically, I want to leave you this one, with this one last thing. Over 2,000 years ago, the man that was considered to be the father of medicine, uh, of the, fa the father of medicine, Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. It's time to take that seriously now. Thank you.